Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Listen, I uh, don't really watch much television and movies and stuff, but once in a while I'll start doing some research. You know, sometimes I watch it just to see where they're trying to herd the sheep. And uh, I found this interesting thing. It's clip a clip from Netflix about an interaction between a a demon, devil, whatever you want to call it, and a what looks like a priest. And uh, I'm going to post the link, and you can. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. It's only like three, maybe four minutes long. Uh, I kind of like everybody's opinion on it. It's kind of interesting, you know. My opinion. Now, I remember. Oh, I don't know. Back in the 90s, my youngest daughter was uh, kind of into the goth scene, and uh, when I heard that, I was like thinking, you know, gothic cathedrals, you know, churches and stuff, and the goths were a Germanic tribe, uh, very warlike, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, this doesn't sound too bad, but then I went and gone, went and saw her. And uh, she's wearing, you know, all black and stuff. Uh, the goths are, you know, they wear all black. Sometimes they paint their faces with white to look like, I guess, skeletons or whatever. And uh, if you want to know what the goth scene was like, well, Marilyn Manson... Uh, for the, those of you old folks, I guess Alice Cooper, and for those of you that are really old, uh, Arthur Brown, the crazy world of Arthur Brown. Uh, but, you know, Alice Cooper and Marilyn Manson. And, uh, of course, I hope she grew out of that phase, but uh, they are into the anarchism and anything against the Bible, I guess. I remember one time I went to go see her, and she's uh, dressed in a, has a black t-shirt on, Metallica, one of her favorite groups, and uh, she's got blue jeans on and what look like biker type boots, um, with a, not a real high heels, but you know, like medium lifts, and then she's got a biker's wallet with the chain and everything connected to her uh, belt. And uh, she's got a blue streak or purple streak going down a strip of her hair, you know. And I look at her and I'm like, um, is, there a, uh, is there a guy on a Harley that's going to be coming to pick you up for a date? And she looked at me, cocked her head kind of sideways and looked at me kind of funny for a few seconds. And, and then she goes, Mom, Dad's bothering me. <laughs> so, you know. I was like, uh, but, uh, you know, hey, I wasn't any different at that age. Probably worse. I was probably a lot worse than she was. So, oh, well, but, uh, yeah, the goth scene, I started investigating it and, uh, it was really deep darkness to say the least. But the, uh, the thing about this Netflix thing um, the goth scene is r sometimes, not all of them, but sometimes they're tied in a lot with uh, vampirism. And let's face it, Hollywood's turned, you know, vampires into blood drinkers. They live forever. They can't live in the light. They only come out at night. There was a song called that, by the way. And, uh, you know, and I started investigating the origins of vampirism. Well, there was a guy named Vlad Tepes, T-E-P-E-S. V-L-A-D was his first name. That's where they get the word, uh, the name Vladimir, you know, like Vladimir Putin. His name was Vlad Tepes. And according to legend history, I don't know, how much is, how much is it true? is true because you know we know who owns the media and has been rewriting all our history but they called him dracul 
which meant dragon. He was from Romania, Transylvania, which is like a province in Romania. Um, I guess you could say that's sort of like, if you're from the UK, it's sort of like Wales. Uh, if you're from France, it's like Burgundy. If you're from Germany, uh, Westphalia. Uh, if you're from the United States, it's a province that's just like, you know, Texas or, you know, like one of our states or New York or California or Florida. But, um, you know, he was from Trans... I'm from Transylvania. I want to drink your blood. You know, that kind of garbage from Hollywood, right? Turns out that Vlad, Count Vlad, he was a member of the royal family. He was a leader. He was a Christian. Yeah. He was a Christian. And he would uh, impale everybody that... Uh, of the Muslims, well, if you were if you were caught breaking God's laws, you got impaled. He was, uh, according to what I understand, his people loved him, and his kingdom. Well, his his yeah, I guess you could say his kingdom was uh, honesty was very highly respected and sought after. I guess you could say and widespread. But he was invaded by Muslims and uh, of the Ottoman Empire, Turkey. You know, those peace-loving Muslims that went in and took over the, uh, the country that they now call Turkey. They killed all the Greeks. That was how they took the country. Well, they also invaded uh, the area of Bosnia. You've heard of Bosnia. Well, that's Muslim now because they killed all the Christians there. And they were they invaded Romania, and Count Vlad was severely over. Uh, they were overrun. They were just totally. They were just too many Muslims. They just couldn't even keep up. They couldn't meet them face to face on the battlefield. They were t horribly outnumbered. So Vlad went underground, and they did hit and run tactics. Uh, you know, they knew the area, uh, and they, when they would find out where the Muslims were going, they would hide and then attack, and then by the time the Muslims uh, could put up a defense, they would run off. So they would just do hit-and-run guerrilla-type tactics, and guerrilla tactics, you know, not, not a monkey, but uh, uh, those of you that were in the military, you know what I'm talking about, but... Uh, yeah, they would do hit and run, go hide, and um, when they caught Muslims, they would impale them and then put them along the roads for the other Muslims to see what would happen to them if they got caught. Of course, the Muslims murdered, killed all the Christians. They, Muslims, showed absolutely no mercy whatsoever. So Count Vlad returned the favor. And the Bible says, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And that's what you were supposed to do with uh, those that broke God's capital laws. And Christ was hung on a cross, which is, you know, wood from a tree. And he was cursed for our sins. He bore our the curse for us. You know, so at least in his uh, human body. So that is why in the West they would hang criminals from trees. So, because they were cursed. And they knew this kind of stuff. So, but the, uh, the thing is, I started looking into the goth stuff. It's tied in with a lot of times with vampires. And the reason they turned Count Vlad into Dracula was because, well, he, you know, at the Last Supper, Jesus took the wine and he says, take ye all and uh, drink all of it. This is the blood of my new covenant. You know, they weren't drinking Christ's blood, but they were drinking the wine, which represented his blood. And then they would say, oh, well, you know, Christians are cannibals. Well, Jesus took the bread and broke it. 
and said, take, eat, this is my body. So, you know, they say that uh, Christians are vampires, but that's what they did. They took a, from what I understand, a great Christian man that was fighting for his country against the invading Muslim hordes that deny the Bible, uh, but at least the Muslims at least honor Jesus as a prophet. Of course, they consider him a lesser prophet than a um, Muhammad, but um, they still consider him as a, a prophet, which compared to those that hang out in the sin of Gogs, um, compared to them, well, that consider Jesus an evil false prophet. What can I tell you? So, this uh, movie clip that I want you to take a look at, it's three to four minutes long. They have Dracula, some kind of a vampire with supernatural power. and But uh, this is actually, the clip is actually about a priest in his church. And the devils come and visit him, and it seems like they're telling him the truth which is kind of out of character for a devil, right? So, I don't know. Take a look. Tell me what you think. Uh, perhaps your observations will be better than mine. But this is what uh, Netflix and what they're doing, you know. So, they turned a Christian man into a vampire. Uh, it's just unbelievable, the, the garbage. But... Uh, yeah, I you know, we got to know what's kind of know what's going on. Jesus said to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. So, this really wasn't much of a Bible study, just uh, you know. Oh, and by the way, my um BitChute channel, I'm loaded a video on there that I'm not going to put on YouTube because I want to keep my YouTube channel up as long as possible. And that that would probably get me banned. Uh, you know, I had YouTube delete four of my videos in one day. The Lord has to be protecting this channel because I've known a lot of people that have lost their channels. And I did a video three years ago where I said, Internet censorship is coming. I saw it three years ago. Actually... I saw it about 15 years ago. Actually, more than 15. Well, yeah, I guess it was fi at least 15 years ago, if not 16 or 17. Um, I had created an evangelism website for goths and the vampire wannabes. And uh, I uh, told them about the blood of Jesus. That's how I tricked them. It was uh, John chapter 6, verse 66. Well, John chapter 6. And uh, I basically told them, if they, oh, you want to live forever? You need the blood. That was my theme. And then when they got to the end of the reading, well, guess what? I told them about the blood of Jesus. I was getting two to 300 emails every single day. I was just inundated. I, I couldn't answer them all. I was doing weddings on the weekends, working a full-time job, and uh, I felt bad I couldn't answer them all. But, you know, maybe if I'd have been retired, I could have done it. But, you know, think about it. 300 emails? Um, if you took three, three minutes for each email times 300, that's 900 minutes. Uh, what is that? That's what, 15 hours? Is that 15 hours? I'm just doing the math in my head. Um, you know? I mean, really? Could you? And that's just one day. That's just one day. My website got over a quarter of a million views. I mean, I was on all the, uh, the vampire and goth websites putting my links up, inviting people, and uh, I did a lot of... Um, I guess you could say, well, not really advertising, but I put a lot of links out there. And I was. I it, it got over a quarter of a million views. 
And then one day, Google just totally, it was gone from their listings. Unless you typed in the exact website name, you couldn't find it. It was gone. And uh, yeah, so I let it, I let the website go because, you know, if you're not getting any views, it's just not worth paying, you know, a couple hundred bucks or to keep your website up, you know. But uh, I just hope that I reach some people. Like I say, I'm not an evangelist. I'm a Bible teacher. There's a difference, you know. An evangelist takes someone that's an unbeliever, turns them into a baby Christian, and a teacher takes the baby Christian and turns them into a soldier. And there's far too many babies and not enough soldiers. What can I tell you? And I can't even teach, I can't even teach the really meaty stuff because most people, they don't, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. So, you know, I just try to hit on the important things. And uh, all these people that think they're going to fly out of here and not have to pay for their faith with their lives, they're, uh, well, they're in for a rude awakening. What can I tell you? All right, well, take a look at the video. Um, it's The link is in the comments and in the description. Also, take a look at the BitChute uh, video if, if you're interested. It's, uh, it's over an hour long, and it's on the purpose of tribulation. Also, you know, the great tribulation. What is the purpose of that? Well, in a nutshell, it's going to be for the Lord to, well, he wants a church without spot and blemish. It's to get rid of all the dross. What is dross? Well, if you're uh, melting metals to purify them, like silver or gold, uh, you melt the rocks, the silver and gold sinks to the bottom, and then the stuff that floats on the top is junk. Sort of like when you... Uh, cook soup with a fatty meat and the gals know what I'm talking about you skim off the fat off the top well it's the same thing well that's what God wants to do he wants to take us and purify us he wants us to rid us of all the garbage of this evil wicked world and depend totally upon him and I just don't see people doing that you know, and I'm guilty of it too. You know, I admit it. I'm a hypocrite. I try not to be a hypocrite like the scribes and the Pharisees, but, uh, you know, what can I tell you? I mean, if I tell you that I've arrived, well, <laughs> um, I'd be a liar. So, all right, take take a look at BitChute. I posted the link and take a look at the uh, the three or four minute video. See where they're Netflix is leading us and it's actually kind of kind of blasphemy against the church but you know when you realize that uh, most of these churches don't serve who they say they serve really I think the dev the demon devil whatever you, you want to call it is speaking the truth so all right um, take care and um, all blessings praise glory and honor to Jesus Amen.